Winter is coming. We are only five weeks out from the start of meteorological winter. The days are getting shorter, temperatures are cooling, and the atmosphere is beginning to respond. The winter months often feature some of the nation's nastiest storms. Prolific lake effect snows, ice storms, blinding blizzards, and even severe weather outbreaks and strong tornadoes. Every year, hundreds of people ask me what the winter will have in store. And now here we are with our winter outlook. Let's break down what to expect month by month. We'll start with November and December. That's when we get our big kitchen sink storms. We call them that because they feature a little bit of everything. Snow on one side, warm air, severe weather on the other. When the seasons clash, we get a mix of all different air masses. Looking ahead, it does seem like November will start off mild in the east and anomalously cool in the west. That's a recipe right for severe weather over the plains, especially with the jet stream slicing in between the air masses. That adds wind energy and occasionally you can get tornadoes too. Now we do typically see a flare up of severe weather during the late fall into early winter with our so-called second season. Anytime you have big temperature swings, you tend to get strong storms and sometimes tornadoes. Lots of people forget that the plains and the south become active once again this time of year. Now November will start off warm and dry across the eastern United States. One thing that concerns me as we head into winter is that this antecedent mild air will help the great lakes stay warmer. The warmer our waters stay in the short to medium term, the greater our lake effect snows will be once we actually start getting them. Getting lake effect snows requires bowling balls of cold air to sit over the lakes and blow frigid air down their lengths. There's a better chance of that happening late November into early to mid December. Now let's talk about the core winter months, December, January, February. I think given everything going on in the atmosphere that most of the country will be warmer and a little bit drier and less snowy than average. The exception will be wetter weather over the Pacific Northwest, cooler weather over the Central and Northern Plains and the Northern Rockies, and perhaps some wet weather near the Great Lakes. Let's examine what factors are at play. For starters, we have waters cooling over the eastern tropical Pacific. That's the first sign of a burgeoning La Nina pattern. Here's one other look at the water temperatures beginning to cool. That cooler water chills the air above, causing it to sink and resulting in high pressure. That will dominate over much of the eastern Pacific. There's another region of cooler waters too, south of Alaska, that plays a role. That's associated with a long-term weather pattern called the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, and right now we're on the negative side. That means we're in the cool phase and likely to stay that way for a little while. So together, that means a lot of cooler than average waters and subsequently a broader area of high pressure. That high pressure is like a magic force field. It diverts the jet stream far north towards the Aleutians up into Canada. That allows anomalously mild air to surge all the way north into British Columbia. But the jet stream, which is already crested, has to dip somewhere else and it kind of comes back down over central North America. Now for starters, where the jet stream is basically sets where the storm track is. That means we're expecting more moisture, Pacific moisture, to be trucked ashore in places like Oregon, Washington, and British Columbia. That probably means warm and wet for like Portland, Seattle, maybe Vancouver as well, with better chances of heavier snow farther east in the mountains where it stays a little bit cooler. Meanwhile, south of the jet stream, the warmth wafts northwards, which means we're above average temperature-wise for pretty much all of the central and the southern United States. It's also a little bit drier than average too because we have general west to northwest flow over much of the lower 48, kind of suppressing gulf moisture to the south. But then the jet stream surges south over the northern plains and the northern intermountain west, allowing frigid Canadian air to spill southwards. That's sort of one commonality with all moderate La Nina events is that we really do tend to see a pretty consistent signal for chilly temperatures over the northern plains. Now, what about the east coast? Well, we see the jet stream pattern, that storm track passes over the Ohio Valley and sort of up the Appalachians. That means to the east, on the milder side, we see predominantly rainy systems. So even though we'll have that moisture, much of it will fall as rain, sleet, maybe some freezing rain, and lesser snow for the big cities. That's why I'm taking the under for snowfall for places like Boston, Hartford, Providence, New York City, Baltimore, Philly, and DC too. The whole I-95 Acela corridor likely will see a less significant winter compared to average. But here's a caveat to that. If the storm track passes nearer over the Appalachians, that places the Midwest and perhaps the Ohio Valley on the backside of storms where you get the cool air wraparound. So there's a better chance that they might see a little bit more snow for places like I don't know, Toledo, Columbus, etc. Now come March, there's a chance that La Nina weakens more towards a neutral state, basically somewhere between El Nino and La Nina, but not really pronounced in either direction. That would allow for two things. 
Number one, we might see the jet stream and the storm track sag a little farther south over New England, allowing them to see a little bit more snowfall and cold air to the north of where the jet stream is. And number two, we might see the emergence of a subtropical jet stream over the Pacific and the Southwest. That would be like a conveyor belt across the southern US, perhaps scooping some moisture eastwards. That, coupled with the subtropical jets, wind jet dynamics, means we could see perhaps a more active spring severe weather season over places like the Deep South, for example, so Mississippi, Alabama, maybe Tennessee, as early as early March. It is worth noting as we head into the wintertime that the Gulf of Mexico is running several degrees above average, which historically has been correlated with a more active spring across the Deep South in terms of severe weather and tornado season. So to summarize, warmer and less snow for the central and southern Rockies, the four corners, the southeast, and the east coast. Colder for the northern plains, and maybe a little bit of extra snow for the Great Lakes. So again, it's not even Halloween yet. The snow has not really begun falling. This is my very early stab. We'll refine this in the weeks ahead, and as always, my radar is your go-to source for severe winter weather, hurricanes, and anything in between. Follow my radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download my radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, and Windows.